Ah, shit. This episode of the BRG Podcast has been brought to you by our patrons. Here at BRG, we'd like to thank those patrons who have subscribed and donated. It is because of generosity like yours that makes this show possible. On this episode of the podcast, we cover this week's latest in gaming news as well as some other news tidbits. Kirok brings us the latest in gaming releases, including Malaka, which is a game we are very, very close to since we've had the guests from that game on, as well as the main topic tonight, which is all about preserving defunct online games. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the BRG Podcast. I am your host, Warp Jester, and as always, my polar bear petting cohort. Hey, how's it going? Hi guys, it's Kirok. How's it going, How Kirok? I'm doing good, uh, how you doing? Excellent, this, thank you. Is it cold there? It's, it, it's cold here, in case you can't uh, uh, tell with the actually, hat. Actually, <laughs> uh, this week's been, all, all our temperatures have been above zero, and in Celsius, zero is freezing. Yes. We've, so, been, we've, we've been below that. My, because... My, my little thermometer. Because, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a very Californian thermometer because it, okay. it, it, it gauges from 100 degrees Fahrenheit down to 33 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about one Celsius. Below okay. that, it just does this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we're, we're out barbecuing in shorts and T-shirt. It's awesome. This weather's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> fucking canadians <laughs> hey you know what guys we are not here to give you the latest weather reports around us what we are here to do is actually to give you a little taste a little tidbit of what's going on in the gaming realm as well as some other news and whatnot so we have some main topics and whatnot now just so you guys know we are a small uh, and, and lovable portion of the larger brg which is a gaming community where we get together and do things like <gasps> gaming i know it's shocking right we also do a lot of other things in terms of videos and and and, and whatnot so if you're interested in knowing more stick around to the end of the show and give you all the details so you guys can find out more about us but tonight we want to get into all the good juicy bits we're also gonna be talking a little bit about some news regarding trying to save uh defunct or abandoned online games that's yes, gonna be a very yeah. very good thing to know about i'm um, also just a quick shout out to uh playstation 4 happy birthday five years old now happy birthday playstation 4 wow. well 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 out of diapers and and ready to rock and roll yeah. <laughs> also somebody else's birthday yes yes it, it well it would have been it would have been steve jobs birthday who is would also be off diapers had he been alive at least yeah. i would hope so i don't know i mean I'm not going to go there. Anyways, guys, let's go ahead and do the news. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and dive into the speed bits here. And we're going to go ahead and start off our lovely uh, thing at the top with Flight Sim Labs caught loading their $100 jet DLC with password stealing malware. Yeah, so here's the deal. Uh, Flight Sim Labs is a company that specializes in creating uh, add-on content for uh, uh, for flight sim software like uh, Microsoft's uh, like X Flight or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they created, they added a new aircraft ex ex uh, experience, extensions, add-ons, etc. And one of their hundred dollar DLCs also came with malware that basically scrapes uh, Chrome passwords. Oh, that's but awesome. but but. but it's okay. But, but, but. It's okay. It is not a, a Chinese hacker that somehow got into their system and put the stuff there. This was actually put there by them on purpose. Intentionally. Yes. But but it's okay. It's okay. They were only doing it to catch pirates. Ah. Uh, har. <laughs> <laughs> now, they, they, they've assured us they've since caught the pirate they wanted, and they've since removed the malware. But what the fuck? That Seriously? Yeah, that's bad. That's distrust. That's that's something else, all right. Uh, but, you know, on the bright side, when it comes to distrust, at least sometimes developers and game people do actually listen. Namely, the developers for Paladin. They have actually heard the overwhelming um, 
grumbles of people regarding <laughs> the latest updates that had uh, a new loot box system put into place, and more more to the point, the card system they have in place. So, if you haven't played Paladins, Paladins has cards to modify your characters, and they changed up that card system and made these 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 super card kind of things. And basically, what it boiled down to is it kind of screwed up the game. So, uh, the Paladins the developers uh, announced that they'll be removing that. Um, that system and rolling back to a previous system and then rolling on a new one eventually. Now, Chris, uh, Chris Larson is the executive producer of Paladins acknowledged that the system has angered many, <laughs> many loyal game fans. Um, and they have heard their feedback loud and clear, uh, cards unbound, which is the expansion, uh, was managed by studio higher ups and pushed down against the will of most, if not all, the Paladins developers. Oh, um, yeah, that so makes sense. yeah, so I mean that, they, and, they, and even the developers inside the company were calling it a pay-to-win charge at this point. Now um, they will be replacing it with a new system. They will be uh, they will be more akin to the original card system they had in place, and this is more or less because people who had the super cards. The, the 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 gap between lower end and higher end was so extreme that you were just going to get pwned. So there gotcha, you go. Gotcha. So uh, continuing on with actually Paladins, Paladins Battleground mode is now in beta uh, Royale style. So this is reported <laughs> by Rock Paper Shotgun. So you know the basic gist of it. It's a big map, hundred players dropped into the map, and basically it's every man for himself. Uh, Difference here is you got 100 players that are weird, wet, uh, wizards with weird weapons, magic abilities, and mounts, which is kind of cool. Personally, though, uh, and you know this is going to keep happening. I really want to know what Blue Hole is going to, you know, if they're going to get all bent out of shape about this. Um, yeah. Let me think here. I'm, I'm going to try to tell the future. Yes. Yeah, but see, that's the thing that bugs me a bit. They should be proud that they kind of <laughs> – not that not, – Wait, listen. Not that the battle royale system is new or anything, but they kind they kind of put it on the map. So this is almost this is good. Okay, like, I, I understand mimicry is 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 the finest form of flattery, but yeah. I don't think that really qualifies in this case because it takes dollars away from them. Yeah. Uh, okay. I see. Your, yeah. Okay. Well. It, we'll see what happens when that comes out. It's in beta, so you know it's gonna be it's gonna be big. So yeah. Uh, there's other games doing it too, but anyways, go, moving on. Doom on the Switch may have changed everything with new motion controls. So this is reported by Ars Technica, mm. and uh, id Software and the partner studio Panic Button rolled out an update for Doom on the Switch. And this update had a bunch of bug fixes and patches and things. But one of the main new features that they added in was uh, motion controls, the capability of playing the game with the Joy Cons through motion, which I think they have already in Skyrim. Um, what do you like run around and like physically do this and punch everybody? I, I I don't know. I think it's guns. Like I haven't I haven't really checked or seen like on a video what what it does. But uh, one of the things that's pretty cool is is that it's it's great for owners of the game that already have it, and it realistically just gives them more options so they can play the game with motion control or without motion control. Up to them. It's freedom. It's choice. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Anyways. Hey, uh, speaking of uh, Nintendo Switch, uh, modders have actually put on a full-fledged uh, Linux program for the Switch. So it's now turned the Switch into a full-fledged Linux tablet. Shock of shocks. Linux <laughs> buffs have turned the Switch into a Linux box. I what what do you want me to say here? They put Linux on fucking everything. You know those old calculator watches you had back in the eighties? They yeah. put Linux on that goddamn. They probably put Doom on it too, to be honest with you. That'd be amazing. So there you go. If you want to run Linux yeah. on your Switch. But that would be a violent game on a watch. It would be actually. Yeah. So Rhode Which Island. means you you could get charged for it more. Yeah. <laughs> Rhode Island politician proposes violent game tax. That's what you meant. Yes. Uh, yeah. So this is reported by uh, Game Industry. Republican member of Rhode Island State House Robert Nardillo D Dolillo. Wow. I A moron. The, the third has revealed plans to raise tax on violent video games to pay for mental health counseling resources in schools. 
Yeah. Okay, this is a quote from it. Uh, it's a statement. He said he said this statement. There is evidence that children exposed to violent video games at a younger age tend to act more aggressively than those who are not. He said. Bullshit. Sorry, what? I don't. I don't think so. Uh, it's not like uh, a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, it, it. The the bill would give schools the additional resources needed to help students deal with that aggression in a positive way. Here's the thing. First of all. He's straight up fucking lying, okay? Uh -huh. There is nothing. He did not cite where he got this information from. Yeah, and, gotcha. by the way, he also happens to have a 93% approval rating with the National Rifle Association. Shock of shocks! Oh and God. just for statistics, just so you guys know, yeah. of these school shooters, we've had school shootings, 20% of them play violent video games. 20% of them. The average... School-aged person, 75% play violent games. If there was a correlation, it would be you'd have a, 75% you know. violent game. You invite yeah. people to violent games. 75% be sh It doesn't work like that. Yeah. And there is no fucking evidence. He is a bold-faced fucking liar, and he's supported by NRI. You're a fucking moron. <laughs> My opinion. Island politician. My opinion. <laughs> cool. for, for, for the sake of not getting sued. My opinion. <laughs> hey, video game giant Ubisoft is exploring blockchain use cases. Now, this is interesting because we all heard about blockchain and talk about cryptocurrency. Ubisoft, mm -hmm. unlike Atari, by the way, is not getting into the cryptocurrency jam. What they are getting into is utilizing crypt, uh, uh, um, uh, blockchain yeah. to as a means to have a true uh, one-off uniqueness to digital games. So the idea with with blockchain is that when you have an identifiable item, a digital item, like a coin, for example, right. that is identified as yours. Nobody can take it. Nobody can duplicate it. It's not an infinitely copyable thing, which is great because in the digital world, everything is infinitely copyable. Yes. Exactly. So this would actually negate that. Now, this is just concept they're working through, but the idea is the technology presents opportunities, like finally having the ability to have a uh, collection um, a, a unique digital collection that is just yours, that if you did want to sell it, you could. You can't make infinite copies of it. And it also goes for things like DLC, same kind of concept. You can actually have something that's, that's earmarked for just you. So a neat idea, and to be honest with you, if it shifts the ability back into the realm of us actually owning our content, and the ability yep. to have the right of first sale for digital content, I'm actually okay with this. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. It's like a digital signature makes it unique. Yep. Now we I are running, we are we are in thread of running a little bit long here, guys. But we got a couple more for you. Yeah. Uh, one of which that Kirok. Oh the well, love yeah. Of fucking uh, God. What? What? The one I'm about to talk about. Why? Yeah, Why does this keep happening? We're we're screwed. Are we, you playing it? I'm playing it right now, and I yeah I, yeah. Every so, single time you hear Boston Dynamics, you see it. It's like they're getting smarter. Okay, and so they're yeah. abusing them. Yes, <laughs> that's so good. Hey, so in the video you're watching, you're watching this robotic dog trying to open a door, and there's a guy who comes in the middle of it and pulls him by the tail, hits him, uh, hits his little crane arm that's going to the handle with a hockey stick. It's incredible because it proves and shows that. Without intervention, the machine has a goal, and the machine adapts on the fly to get that, to that goal, to, to complete that goal. And that um, goal right now is opening is open a door. door. Right. Who knows what it'll be <clears throat> 20 years from now, 10 years from now, 5 Stop years Stop abusing bots that are getting smarter and know how to open fucking doors. We're fucked. <laughs> I, for one, welcome our new digital overlords. <laughs> Just for the record, have it on the interwebs out there. I welcome you. Please don't kill me. <laughs> Um, real quick, guys, I'm just going to touch on this because it, it, it's a whole lot of bullshit, but I want to put it out there because it, it's popular. So this guy that I'm not familiar with, uh, James Phantom Lord yeah, sure Varga, was, um, was a streamer that kind of like some other assholes we talked about a while yes. back, was involved in a CSGO skin scandal where basically he was uh, part owner of a skin gambling site, didn't disclose that. Um, there's 
evidence from a hacker who broke into a Skype account found out that he was actually artificially skewing his results from the gambling to entice players to play this game on the site that he has a ownership in. And kind of theoretically inside of that, Twitch ended up banning him. Now, there's a whole lot of details regarding what they actually right. banned him for and the delay in time telling him what they banned him for. And that is what brought him 600 days later to bring a lawsuit against Twitch. I don't think he's going to do so well in this lawsuit. I'll be honest with you. No. Um, I don't know what kind of contract he has with him as a partnership. He's a, he is a popular person. So I'm sure he has some kind of co contract. Um, but in the end, these this, this, this is not some government-funded public service. It's Twitch. It's a private company. If they want to tell you fuck off, they can tell you fuck off as far as I know. So yeah. – whatevs but you know it sounds like what it is is it's a douchebag trying to get back some money that he thinks he owed this right here is douchebag is he owed anything i don't think so <laughs> no, just my two bags i'm in agreement i'm in agreement one last uh, one one last one so uh we actually talked about this as a topic in the previous episode and uh it's about twitch and the new community guidelines they basically have postponed the date of effect of these updated community guidelines to clarify vague expectations um <laughs> Let, let's, just, let's just get to the, the, the crux of this. Essentially, they moved it to March 5th. Uh, like, what, it, two weeks it, out? It, yeah, so they, they're taking this opportunity to better explain some sections in the wake of feedback from the community. Uh, personally, I look at this and I'm thinking, in reality, it really doesn't matter. Uh, whether or not they do take the time to give us a little bit more detail. I think they were pretty clear and cut on the one when we first got it. Yeah. They're going to make the change regardless. It's going to happen. Don't be a it... dick. Take yeah. responsibility if you're promoting your crowd to be dicks. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Thing. But yeah. now you get two more weeks to not be obligated to that yet. Yes, exactly. So two more weeks of dickish before you don't have to. Anyways, guys, that is the Speed Bits. We're going to go ahead and shuffle on. Okay, guys. Welcome back to another Game Releases with me, Kirok. Guys, there is a special title in this collection this week. Let's get into it, and I'll show you which one. And your first game is on February 27th. It is called Moss, and it is an adventure game for the PSVR, so strictly a PlayStation VR game. Uh, I think I remember seeing this game back a year or two ago at an E3. I didn't think much of it at that time, but after having watched a trailer, this game looks amazing. Uh, remember, it is VR only, but it is beautiful. The graphics are detailed, and it is... It is such a colorful world to be in, and I can only imagine what it's like in virtual reality. Uh, it's got it's an adventure game, and it's got some puzzles and swordplay mixed in there. I am super jealous, unless, of course, they release it for the Vive. Your next game is on February 27th, and it is called Beckett for the PC only. It is a tactical shooter. So this looks to be a new style of shooter that seems more lone wolf than team-based. Uh, the graphics have a nice cell shading-esque look to them, and it looks like the kind of game game that has so much going on in a match that if I were to play it, I'd probably lose track real easily. You get to play as Beckett, a female protagonist, and you have basically a couple of uh, fast repeating shooter guns as well as one big main cannon. So it's one of those games where you get to go pow, 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 or boom. And your next game also on February 27th is Mulaka. This is coming out for PC, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One. It is a 3D action adventure game. And guys, this game holds a special place in my heart because uh, if you remember, if any of you guys hanging around remember, this is something that uh, our fellow friends from Gaming Frontier, who we had on the show, on the podcast, uh, are developing. This is their game. Uh, this is going to be an amazing game. Um, I, I honestly, I've taken a look at the videos of it, and it looks fantastic. The art style is amazing amazing and I watched the trailer and found myself really intrigued and wanting to play. Uh, the game looks like a satisfying journey for the player through uh, an amazing story uh, and, and you know me I'm a sucker for stories. And your last game is on February 28th it is called Ilium Prison Escape for the PC only. It is a sword fighter action dungeon crawler. Now, this game is intense. Basically, the whole premise is you have to escape prison. Uh, the graphics fit the situation well, but they're nothing special to write home about. Uh, the concept, however, is pretty awesome. You play as Jaren Sorengar, a former master swordsman, and you are a prisoner of war. Basically, the time has come to break free of your shackles, 
simply because otherwise you're going to die in prison. So it's pretty cool. And that's it, guys. That's another game releases for you this week in the bag. Oh, my God. I've had so much fun doing this. And Mulaka, guys. Mulaka. That is freaking awesome. Guests on our show have their own video game coming out. Amazing. I can't wait to play it. Well, I'll see you next time, and bye for now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and dive into the main topic tonight. And the main topic actually has to do uh, with the DMCA. So if you don't know what the DMCA is, it's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And it, it, it actually covers a lot of stuff. But mm -hmm. tonight we're going to focus on the gaming realm. And basically what it boils down to is, is currently within the DMCA, um, there's rules regarding basically um, what you can and can't do with game. So, for example, your allowed to make copies of your game you're not allowed to break certain security aspects which is kind of a oxymoron because you have to break encryption to be able to copy your game but mm. i digress um but what this does do is it allows certain groups to preserve uh defunct games for nostalgia for archival purposes and so on um however the the cute little caveat here is that when it doesn't protect is online games and this is Multiple. where we this is where we dive into this topic which is um they're actually trying there's actually a group that's called the uh, museum of art and digital entertainment which is actually in oakland a few hours from me um that is requesting that the u.s copyright uh, office broaden its exceptions to include games that are shut down uh, your former online games. And this will include games, to give you an example, of things such as, like, Star Wars Galaxies or City of Heroes. Yep. Which... Old online games that basically no longer have functioning servers. Exactly. So it's essentially, it's not possible to play those games anymore because those servers are offline. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, seems like a noble <clears throat> cause to me. Open and shut case, there you go. Have a good evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh... Basically, the the uh, DMCA uh, is a law meant to protect intellectual properties, uh, basically from theft or piracy, um, such as video games and other software. Uh, this is interesting because they just want to have a small modification made to the DMCA to allow them to be able to preserve these online games. Yeah. Yeah. So. Which which is which is a wonderful thing. I mean, I I I am all for preservation uh, of art and, this, and and to be very clear my my stance on this is games are very much and very deliberately in the art category they yeah. are art they're 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 beautiful the 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 views the pictures the imagery is art the stories that they tell like a book is art um the the world you can get sucked into these are all things that are very much art so preserving this is important by by every stretch of the imagination so there's I, there's a lot of work when you think about it there's a lot of work that goes into these games oh, by yeah. groups of people so you got that's why you have categories like we did the video game awards that's why you have categories like game of the year best art design best sound design best yeah. you know so so yeah absolutely these are works of art and uh, made or Museum of Art and Digital Entertainment, their goal is to preserve these defunct games, these mm -hmm. games that are no longer um, available. Um, <clears throat> it's not just for nostalgia gamers, but also for researchers and scholars in, in the future, right? Yep. So, and, that, that, yeah. and, and that is a good point, too, is it, it, it is not just for nostalgia aspects. Now, I, I think there's a lot to be said. I, I don't, I can't think of any Examples off the top of my head, um, the the for what games or for, for researchers to go back through, oh. but there, but I'm sure there have been, and because of this, having that um, that stuff preserved is critical. Now, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. While I I understand and agree where we're coming from, there are a few caveats here that really have to be uh, kind of fleshed out now. When we're talking about this exception, again, we're talking about online games that require a server. Games that are like land-based local host games, like Unreal Tournament, for example, are already are already have that exemption because you're you're buying the disc, so to speak, and you're preserving that software on there. 
The right. issue, however, is that um, when you're talking about preserving an online game, you're talking about preserving code that runs on the server that has never been released to the public. And this is what brings up the kind of the crux of the situation here. Um, the Entertainment Software Association, ESA, which acts on the be behalf of uh, big companies such as Electronic Arts, Nintendo, Ubisoft, and many other game publishers, yeah. have asked the US, the U.S. Copyright Office not to make these exemptions uh, to preserve abandoned online games for further generations. The company argues that uh, libraries, museums, uh, and their affiliates might exploit uh, such uh, such a right for commercial purposes, and they, they actually go on to denote that even for a a five hundred one c three nonprofit such as Made, that they still charge a ten dollar fee to walk in the door, mm, to, and and. To... and to go to the museum and, and exactly and, yeah and, and if you guys don't know maze is a place you actually go to the museum <laughs> this is an interactive museum you don't just go there and stare at a console or a cover art of a game you can actually sit down and play these things so ten dollars walk in and try some of this old old content out so wow I, that's pretty cool i didn't even know about yeah that. if you ever come down here we'll go but okay um so i understand where they're coming from and the the, the, the other thing that the, is that um they stress that well, this actually opens up the possibility of people getting a hold of the code and making their own private servers, basically. Mm -hmm. Which, you can't argue that point because there are plenty of private servers for games that are not only defunct, but games that are currently in existence. There, there are a, a ton of private servers for WoW. That's true. Yeah. I actually play on a private server for EverQuest 1. And EverQuest One still technically is around, and yet I plan a private server because it's it's a retro version of it. Uh, we also talked about that big debacle with, with uh, the with WoW Blizzard, yeah, yeah, where Blizzard yeah. had to shut down a WoW a a a, a, a vanilla WoW server. Um, See, but I I look at that and I think to myself, uh, what the last announcement in the last E three, I think it was E three mm -hmm. that Blizzard made, or was the expansion that they're releasing. As well, they're also re-releasing WoW again in vanilla. Which is a good point. And that's actually what the ESA said in argument, which is it stresses that their members already make efforts to revive older games themselves. There's a vibrant and growing market for retro games, which game companies are motivated to serve, they say. Yeah. So, so that is a true point. So if their if their fear is that uh, that it's gonna cut into their already current existing online multiplayer games, mm -hmm. they already own these games that are defunct. It's their intellectual property. Yep. Why couldn't they re release them and put them out? Maybe not at the same price they did when they were first out, maybe mm -hmm. less or include them as a bonus thing in their current online games. And yeah. that, they, they could do that they and could. not have to worry about it. But don't forget, we're, we're not talking about you know a, a digital remaster or re-release of Skyrim. We're talking right. about having to spool up servers, support staff, tax, so updates, yeah. hardware, etc. And to be quite frank and honest... It's a little bit inhibitive to want to do that if you actually have to compete with other private servers that are already out there. Okay, I gotcha. And I mean, on top of that, to, to keep not just to maintain that stuff, but what they're already doing. Yeah, and, 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 and to be honest here, we're talking about games that were shut down. And the only reason you would shut down an online game is because it's weren't. not making the money anymore. That's right. In other words, it's not pulling in the people to play the game. Exactly. If you yeah. can't, there, there is a... Although it's, it's somewhat scalable, you need one server to solve this many people, you need 50 servers to hold this many people. At some point, there is a minimum threshold. You can't run a full server and the minimum hardware necessary for two people to play. So they, they, they shut them down with good reason. And there yes, there may be a time when people want to circle back around and nostalgia nerds want to play it again. Uh, but is it worth it to them to reinvest? Exactly. And, and, and that, that line for where it's worth gets pushed back the more private servers there are people if, if people want to play private servers are willing to do it at the cost of community donation whatnot it's that much more of a community they're already established on another server they don't want to go back to the official server necessarily 
it makes it hard. You literally are competing with yourself at that point. So here's the, the question I have is, is there reason to say to the, to them, no, we don't want you to make an alteration in the DMCA. We don't want online games to be exempt. Are they, is that right? Because the game's dead. Like, yeah, so this is this is where we get into the kind of the, the crux of the conversation in terms of <clears throat> should this be done or should it not? And I think right. I think the big issue here is that <clears throat> from just the baseline for the articles I read, looking at what they're talking about, they're talking about expanding the ex- the exemption to online games with the same kind of provisos that we currently have for non-online for games. For non-one, yes. Which allow you to preserve, copy, etc. Um, but again, the problem with that is it doesn't really account for or address the fact that these are fundamentally different games. Again, you don't have, you don't, you, you, officially, you don't have public access to the software that they're talking about the server software right so right there you're already breaking the rules you have to basically pirate or steal the software now of course they could say well we're we're, we're not going to do that we're we as a as a archival service are going to simply ask ea ask sony etc to just hand over this server software so that we can preserve it the other problem with this is it doesn't make any provisos that specifically stipulate specifically this is yeah. only for the use of archiving is not to be used for playing etc and to be quite frank and honest that's better than nothing but you know people are like yes. oh <laughs> they would want they would want to make it to be playable especially if they have people who can pay and come in and yeah uh, try the games and and a lot of this content too even if it's defunct it's still ip that has some value in some way that they may want to sell off to that company at some point. Mm, and yes, again, yes. If, if, if you're selling off something that everybody has, it's kind of hard to sell it. Mm. So there's, there's a lot here to, to really well into now, just point of fact, yeah. um, looking at just EA, for example, um, with, with all the franchises it has, including like FIFA world cup, NASCAR and the Sims, Currently stands at 319 games and servers that have been discontinued since 2013. Soak that in that's, for a minute. That's crazy. That's a huge Soak number. Soak that in for a minute. So he, here is literally a company that is that is tossing online connectivity left and right. I mean that that, that that's literally just over a game per week since 2012. Um. So it, it, it gives you okay, – you have to understand that. It's also worth noting too that it's there's an estimated 53% of gamers play yeah. or have played online games, online server-connected games. So there's a large exposure to this. Again, games are popular. People are familiar with it. Everybody's played with some kind of game. And we, we talked about you know uh, Star Wars and, and City of Heroes as an example, but this could also extend to things like Farmville. You know, there's other online type games. Hell, Cra- right. uh, Crash of Clans or Clash of Clans, um, those kind of things. So like, yeah, mobile, mobile yeah. type games too. A lot of mobile stuff is connected like that. So <clears throat> there's a lot to be said regarding that stuff. And a lot, and to be fair, a lot of these kind of games. They, they fold and go under, and the IP is kind of lost to the winds. I mean, yeah, somebody's going to buy the, the bulk of the IP, but it's, it's literally going to get pocked in the box and thrown in the corner. I personally didn't know that there was that many that they basically are shutting down. We're just down talking like about that. EA. No, I, I know. Well, they're, be, looking for the, they're looking for their uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, That's why they're throwing and, and seeing what sticks. To be fair, though, when we talk about EA, we're talking about because EA is, is a big sports-related aspect, and all, all many, 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 many games now have an online feature to them, right? Uh, so much so, there's been back and forth about online games not having a, a single-player mode anymore. That's right. Yeah. And when you talk about sports games, you've got you know FIFA 2012, FIFA 2013, FIFA 2014. It's, you're they're, not gonna you're not gonna keep hosting the old version. You're going to dump the server and tell people you want to play FIFA, buy the next version, get onto the next version servers. 
So that's probably why they're cycling through things so so quickly so in this sense. Uh, but there are old versions of Sims that are defunct. They have you know newer versions and whatnot. Yeah. But this is the, and this is the point is, <clears throat> yes, I can see they may want to come back around. They may want to officially re-release some re-release. of this old content. But it's not going to be for a while, and it kind of sucks. I mean, I'm I struggle with this. I'm I'm trying to play devil's advocate here because I totally understand where they're coming from. They don't want their IP lost because the other, the other thing to kind of keep in mind too is that I, I'm not really sure if trademark really plays into this per se. Gotcha. But when you have an IP and you let it go public, and for all intents and purposes, it's kind of going public in that sense, you af- you can you could arguably lose your rights to that IP. To that trademark. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, I don't want to. Is... Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say one of the games uh, that they. Oh, what was it? Titanfall was EA. Mm-hmm. Oh uh, no! And Titan... it was. Was it EA? I, I'm going to check real quick. Um, Microsoft. But... Anyways, what about? Yeah. It? Um. It basically, let me just see. Yeah, it was. Yay. So its, it's original game was an online only. Mm-hmm. Right? And then, of course, that game died pretty quick, and the people were complaining, and they in the second game, they also have the online play, but now <clears throat> they also included the a single player, player as well, campaign. Ba- based yeah. on what you were saying a moment ago. But I imagine that a lot of people aren't going to be playing that game it was what released well the first one was in 2014 they'll have to eventually shut down that server and then this is yeah. where an example of where that's the kind of game the maid wants to be able to preserve but mm-hmm. with the current dmca digital uh, they laws can. they can legally exactly yeah they, they, they can archive the again the copy that you buy but you can't do anything with it because it's not connected so they just want to be able to have that server element so they can bring it up so here, here's what boils really down to. Yeah. I love the idea of expanding safe harbor for preserving online games. And I really think that we should because game companies have proven that sometimes shit happens. And, and, and legitimately and fairly, they, they lose the code. It gets shoveled yep. onto a, sh- a server and then shoveled onto a backup tape and then people don't realize what's on it and they lose it or it dies or whatever. So having somebody who, who whose purpose is to carefully preserve and care for code uh, is important. So I think what we really need to do here is don't try to take the easy way out because it's never going to happen. With all due respect – these game companies have a huge lobbying pool <laughs> and they can just basically buy their politicians and say, this is not going to happen. What I think we should do though, is I think we should open up a dialogue with these companies and say, Hey, listen, we totally understand and respect where you're coming from, but we do want to make sure that we have the ability to preserve this because, because you guys have done a brilliant job with it. We want to preserve it for posterity for again, study Etc. How can we do this? What kind of legislation can we draw up that we can both agree on? It can be simple stipulations, like I said, of not ha- you know having certain provisos for it can't be public in terms of giving to anybody, Dominic yes. and Harry. It can't be for profit, <laughs> um, anything like that. But again, that's still going to be some. It's going to be a really sticky wicket. Again. You're talking about Made, who's a nonprofit organization that is a museum that's devoted to preserving that charges a ten dollar fee to get in. And then you have server, private servers that are already act, in existence. Yeah, act like a nonprofit in that they're not trying to make money. They're just trying to keep the server running, so they ask for donations from people. Right. How do you how do you line out in lawyer speak? That this comp that this this group does not become this group that's not making a profit that's only using the money for the the sole purpose of preserving this for yeah. play Keeping is not allowed alive. But this nonprofit that is designed to preserve this is that's making money at the door is allowed. <laughs> it gets very bass backwards very quickly. Right. So I'm not sure what the what the what the answer is. For this, I, I don't have 
I know I want to happen, but I don't know how to do it. And I, I will leave that to the lawyers in the end. But the real the real kicker here is we have to get a big enough voice on the side of these museums, these preservation groups, to get them to be heard by the industry and to sit down and talk with them. And I, I will say, at least to that point here, when it comes to Made, for example, I find it curious because under sponsors here, they have Adobe Digital, Google, GitHub, and PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Now, I haven't looked at the complete list of who ESA serves. I'm not, I, I, I want to say Sony is in there. I would guess as much. But when I see PlayStation is supporting Made, I wonder. I wonder if they can use well, that as, yeah, as a, as a leverage point to start a dialogue. Say, hey, guys, listen, you support us. We appreciate it. Here's the situation. We do not want to screw you out of out of profit, out of the right to your content, or out of the ability for you to revisit in a in a retro style or, or, or a, a remaster, whatever you want to call it. But we do want to make sure the code is never lost for posterity. How can we do this? If we can do that we're golden um i mean if the if the change is not made and they they say nope can't be done uh the worst that can happen is is that that game that server code can be lost forever yep uh, it, 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 it's effectively not having a backup you, you've made a copy of all your so, photos to yeah. one hard drive if it goes yeah, you're done exactly they just won't be able so to make any like, copies it, it's it's almost like the extinction extinction of a species. Only it's digital. It's a game. It's something like that. That is a very apt way to put it. And yeah, you're right. Yeah. So that's that's it in a nutshell, guys. Um, I do want to get your guys' input on this because this is a, I think I think an important topic. I mean, to be fair, our generation kind of grew up with consoles. You know, yeah. at my youngest youngest age. Um, there was the Atari and going forward for home consoles and arcade cabinets, you know, they, 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 they have been an active part of our lives. I went to the arcades. I played, you know, standups in, in liquor stores. I had Nintendo. Um, it is a part of our lives and I think it's well worth preserving this kind of content. So I think finding yeah. a way to do this is very important. But again, I do want to get your guys' input. So please make sure you leave comments down below. Let us know your take on it. Are you for this? Are you against it? If you have some ideas or thoughts in terms of what would be a great middle ground, I would love to hear that. And that's something we definitely follow up on um, either here or in a new show we're going to be starting soon in a round table. I would love to be able to bring this up and talk about it more. So please, please, please let us know and we'll go from there. Anyways, guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, get things wrapped up here. So we'll be right back. All right, peoples. Thank you so much once again for joining us this wonderful, wonderful evening. Um, I got to say, man, I'm really, really interested in what's going to happen with that topic. Again, I, I'm really interested to in see what people say about it. Um, but that said, I'm also really interested in what's going on with Kirok. My friend. Oh, hey, hi, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's going on? Uh, we actually, well, okay. Everybody knows my YouTube website, um, and on there I've been posting the uh, Mafia Three you videos. The format. Uh, did I? Did I change it? Oh, it looks different now. Okay. I uh, I did. Um, oh no, I I got my my letter from them officially saying that I'm no no longer monetizable. Oh yeah. It's oh, now, so you can't do the now preview videos now because of that? Uh, I have to check. I have not gone in to it, look. It, it's back where Holmes shows like different uh, playlists. No preview videos showing you. Interesting. Oh, really? well, nonetheless. Okay. So yeah. Let, let's face back. YouTube's done anyway. The, the real the real yeah, thing no now is, is Twitch. It's Twitch exactly. It's all about Twitch. So so I I I've been playing uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance and that game is fantastic. And it kind of sucks because I'm going to have to put it down to continue with some more Mafia 3 so that I can keep up with the videos that are posting on the YouTube channel. But I will do that quickly and then go back to Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come is amazing. It's an RPG slash simulator. Okay. So good. I'm streaming that now and I'm loving every minute of it. Nice. Yeah. Make sure you guys go over to uh, Kirok. Kirok Craft on Twitch yeah. and on YouTube. And uh, you can... You can... Check those things out. Are you gonna be putting Kingdom Come on uh, YouTube? 
No, I won't be. I'm just enjoying the game. Just people can come in and watch me fail at it. Fuck again. if you want to see it, see and it live. <laughs> yes. And well, there are videos that are maintained on uh, on Twitch, but they're for a short period. Exactly. Anyways, I digress. How's yeah. people over at Project Singularity doing? Everyone's good. Uh, there was some rumblings via email about them playing some Insurgency, which I would have loved to play. Via but uh, email. Yeah, yeah I know. Are, you guys are so fucking quaint. It's it's painful. it's weird. It's weird. Uh, we did get together a couple weeks back with me, Zero Crane, and we played some insurgency, and it was so much fun. Well, it's right. Zero's uh, so on your guys' roster now. He, yeah, yeah, he is. I, I still think and, you guys are nuts for doing that. Just saying. <laughs> ah, he's cool. He's a fun guy. Yes, uh, nah, I give him a hard time. So, I love him to death. Yeah, and of so course, that's that. of course, hop along. Hop along. Uh, we uh, we got together yesterday, recorded a couple episodes. I got more to edit in the bank. Uh, so we're having a lot of fun putting out uh, episodes. It's putting it's out great. episodes it's... and drinking bad beer, apparently. And drinking bad beer. Yeah. If you yeah. ever if you ever see a, a beer that's a German cake beer, yeah. Apparently, apparently, don't awful. drink it. <laughs> it's awful. There's actually, I even tried a, a different beer. It was a uh, pumpkin ale. And I expected it to be better than it was. It wasn't the greatest, but after a little was while, was it better you than the cake? The it was better than the cake. There you I go. Drink See, that over the cake. Hey yeah. guys, if you want to have conversations about bad beer, among other things, I definitely <laughs> encourage you guys to actually come on over to the BRG Discord and have a lovely, lovely conversation yes. with us. That is always less than PC. Just don't, don't have your small child looking over your shoulder reading while you're there. Just probably best off <laughs> but again guys we are a gaming community we love to have gamers with us and we love having fun um talking about games talking about off topic playing games together doing events etc and we do also have a lot of other content for you now a lot of people that are in our group are either retired or active media people meaning they do twitch they've done or do youtube um but BRG as a whole, we also have a YouTube channel. Hey, look, you're here. Yay. While you're here, might I recommend that you might say hit the subscribe button and enjoy us. And no one thinks are coming up whenever we put stuff out. As well as if you'd like, if you're more into the whole live thingy, we actually have a Twitch channel for BRG. So let's go to Twitch and look at Ball Rocket Gaming. Yeah. And you'll find us there. We usually uh, have content Monday through Friday. Uh, yeah, I was watching Thomas play Parasite Eve. Excellent. It was so good to see that game again. And Thomas is really fun to watch. Yeah. Because we have, we have we have many different creators who actually contribute their time to this channel Monday through Friday. And we're going to have more stuff coming down the pipe here pretty soon. So he has always something there to watch. If we're not actually actively streaming on this channel, we usually have somebody from the community being hosted. So there's a good chance that you're going to find something during the day that you can watch on this channel here. So definitely go ahead and check that out, please. Also, guys, just a quick little note aside. Um, we really, really are looking for some more people to help out with the day-to-day -day and special things for both um, the podcast community as well as for the BRG yeah. community as a whole. So... If you're interested in becoming a part of the community and having active role and stuff, this is the place to be. <coughs> oh, bless you. Almost made it through. Also, guys, <laughs> if, if you want to take the more relaxed approach but still want to support our group, I definitely encourage you to head over to our Patreon page over at patreon.com slash Gaming, And you can throw a few dollars our way. We do actually have tiered levels, so you can get a hearty thank you up to a t-shirt if you'd like. Um, so I definitely encourage you to head over there and check things out like that. And uh, we can go from there. Anyways, guys, thank you once again for enjoying the show with us. We do this every week on YouTube. So stay tuned for more stuff, and we'll try to keep you as entertained as humanly possible. Bye for now. Bye, everyone.